So welcome everyone to Messy Easter Favorites. Uh, it's, um, it is going to be fun to hear from Johanna and Maureen as to how uh, some things that they've enjoyed doing over the past couple of years with their messy church. Um, welcome also on this one year anniversary, I guess it's the anniversary when uh, COVID-19 was declared a pandemic, a global pandemic. And uh, all of us realize how much things have changed over this past year. Most of us, I think, are familiar with Zoom by now. That's one thing that has changed for a lot of us. But um, if you're not, um, uh, if you could keep muted, that would be great just to keep the feedback uh, back. We'll have a chance uh, throughout, the, throughout the hour um, to, unmute you, to unmute you and have you ask questions as you want to ask questions of Maureen and Johanna. Um, also, if you have earphones in, that's great. Uh, if you're muted, that doesn't, it's, it's, it's not quite as, quite as much of a problem. If you, I will be monitoring the chat room today. So if you have a question during the presentation, um, go ahead and put it into the chat. Usually the chat is down, depending on what device you're using, usually the chat is down below and you can uh, chat using your keyboard that way. Um, I am Roberta. I'm the executive director of Messy Church USA. Messy Church USA has uh, been an organization since officially since 2017. Uh, we're not very old, but we are partnering. We are partners with uh, the Messy Church Global Movement, uh, which began in England. And uh, Lucy Moore, the founder of Messy Church, is uh, is a member, a liaison member of our of our board of directors. So we're a nonprofit, and uh, we're um, this past year um, has been a bit of a challenge to figure out how can we support one another in in the in the way things have changed with church and everything. But we're so glad you're here today, and we're excited to hear about messy Easter favorites. Um, before we get started, um, I'd like to. Uh, begin with prayer. So let's, let's uh, take a moment to pray. Creator God, we thank you for being able to connect throughout, throughout this United States from different places, from living rooms and offices. We thank you for our um, companions that may be at our feet. We thank you for um, the spring weather, or some places it's 70 degrees and some places it's much colder. Be with us this time, be with Johanna and be with Mar Maureen as they share with us their ideas of how to create some messy Easter, even in this time of some lockdown. In the name of Christ, I pray, amen. amen. So I want to introduce Johanna. Johanna is our Associate Director at Messy Church USA. She does that in her spare time because her real full-time job is um, uh, she is uh, at, serves at Aldersgate United Methodist Church in, in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, where um, her title is Director of Education. Is that your official Director title? of Disciple formation. I think it's changed like four times. Since I've okay. Been All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Right now. And I like should say formation. it is, as of several years ago, it is now Dr. Johanna Meyer. So I don't ever, uh, I, so I should introduce you that way. Um, she um, at her church started Messy Church eight years ago, and they've been going for eight years at uh, Aldersgate. Our second presenter today is Maureen Carey Back. She is from uh, Virginia, Northern Virginia. I think you're, um, uh, and um, she serves as a lay pastoral assistant at St. David's Episcopal Church and, um, uh, and also is in charge mainly of Christian education. And they have been doing a uh, messy church for about four years um, at St. David's. So we're very excited to see what they have to share with us today. And I am going to um, turn it over now to Maureen. Thank you, Roberta. Um, we'll get started and to begin um, what I would like, we're going to um, jump into Holy Week. But before we do that, um, one of the resources that I've used and at the end, 
exclusive resources that will be shared with you. But this is an amazing um, book if you don't have it, um, our Messy Easter book. It's a really a wealth of information that is in here, a lot of fun, you know, fun activities. But let me share my screen here to get started. And we will. Right. We really did do this before we hopped on, so this wouldn't happen, but right, I just have to. I am sorry. Then start again. Here we go. Okay, and let me. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so what I'm going to do. Um, Hang with, on, Maureen, you're still. Yes. Stop, um, stop sharing and start again. Um, it's still showing, yeah. Try again. There we go. There we go. Are we good? Okay, well, yeah. thank you. And thank you for your patience. Um, so be beginning this morning, I'm going to be talking, um, walking us through Holy Week. And there are many favorites. So this is just a small collection of them. And as we said, there'll be opportunities for questions and then to talk about um, some different things. So beginning um, with Palm Sunday, um, an opportunity with doing Messy Church at home. And I think one of the blessings that has come out of this pandemic with Messy Church, I know it's been frustrating that we haven't been able to meet together in person, but we really have a collective audience doing it at home or in small groups doing it via Zoom. So we already have that um, intergenerational community built in within our family. So it's a really wonderful way even introduce Messy Church to start it within family gatherings. So creating a sacred space um, during Lent is an opportunity just, um, and I know I'm also preaching to the choir, but it is an opportunity to just have that space in your home where you may be gathering during that week, since Holy Week is such a, a special time to have, you know, a candle, a purple cloth, if your tradition does do those liturgical colors, and the empty bowl is an opportunity to um, write prayers or things that you might be doing during the week, and with children, you can even use the plastic Easter eggs and have them put them inside the egg and then they'll be able to open that up and we'll talk a little bit further you know a little bit more about that and then also have a a prayer a scripture a poem something that's special or important to your family or your tradition that can be read gathering in that sacred space with a reminder that this is a time coming together to be together and to be with God and then of course across um, you know to have that and then beginning with Palm Sunday of course, you know, reading the scripture, sharing the story, and then moving into some craft time together to keep things hands on. And this is one of them that is one of my favorites. It's very simple using, you know, tracing hands, using green paper, it doesn't even have to be, be whatever you have, placing them on sticks and having that opportunity to even put them around a doorway, welcoming um, the entrance into Jerusalem. So that way your home is welcoming Jesus. So it's an opportunity to talk to the family, talk to your family about welcoming Jesus into your home. And you're going to be sharing that story all week long. And then the opportunity to be um, having a parade in your home outside, waving the palms that way. And if I go too fast, just somebody give me a, um, you know, a heads up. And then this won't play on here, but I do encourage you to take a look at this. It's a great visual and it's from a book. Um, it's all stories that you can do with rocks, but it tells the Palm Sunday story. And I know Joanna and I tried yesterday if I'd be able to show it on here and I wasn't able to, but what it is, it's only two and a half minutes and it's a collection of rocks and they just come together. So it's a really wonderful visual, especially for young children to see the story come alive with simple pictures. So it's not, um, you know, because so many pictures can be very traditional for children. So this way it does, um, but it reaches all ages. So I really um, suggest you to take a look at that. And they have an Easter one. They have multiple ones that you're able to use. Moving into the rest of Holy Week with uh, going into Monday Thursday or Holy Thursday. Um, this is an opportunity to gather together and share a meal. And part of our messy church time together is celebration and sharing a meal. And Monday Thursday really leads such, uh, lends such a wonderful opportunity to share this time together. And again, sharing the story. Um, and depending on the ages that are involved, you can actually read it uh, from the Bible. And there are some wonderful Bible resources out there. Use your favorite, a couple of my favorites. 
that I have. Um, this one I picked up at our Messy Church Conference. I, I love this, and it comes with questions and stories. And this is, it. in the end, I have a slide that has all of our Bible information and the Spark Story Bible. Also, I use this one a lot also because it has some really great, um, I mean, this isn't the, it just has some really good pictures also that are simple to follow um, and simple wording. So you have a young reader, you're able also able to you know, to read from that. But um, making the meal, if you plan ahead, whatever the meal is going to be that night, you have the family involved in creating the meal together. Um, you can make placemats, which again, go with the story. Or even here, you can see just the um, craft that was done. But if you have a butcher block table, um, not table, excuse me, paper, you can just roll that out and have um, the family just draw the story as you're going along just to participate in that way to create a visual that they have there and another way to do the story is to create story cards of the story of the last supper you can do those ahead of time and they're placed out on the table sharing your meal together each person can take a time um, an opportunity to share that story with one another so we want it to be engaging and fun and also um, teaching the story and this is just a, um, a picture just to show you the messy meal, just to have it um, hands-on. Um, it can um, can be theme-based, so, but again, with your family, you can decide that. And of course, with the Last Supper, you can have you know the bread and to talk about the story with Jesus. And an opportunity also um, is to introduce, if you haven't already, but the messy grace. So that's a prayer that we use during messy church, and it's very simple to follow and has hand motions together. And I just thought maybe that was something that we could even do now um, together. So we start and we hold out our hands as if we are expecting a present and we say together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in our heart and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit as we hold our hands be with us now and forever. And we raise our hands up and shout, amen. So it's simple and again, it's interactive and gives us an opportunity to um, have that prayer time together. To add on to the um, traditions, some of the traditions of um, Monday, Thursday, depending on your faith tradition is stripping of the altar or you can strip the table at home. Again, if you remember at the beginning, starting with um, Palm Sunday, we're creating that whole opportunity to tell the story as the week goes along. So stripping of the table or stripping of the altar, it's cleaning things, of course, off the table and even throughout the house, invite um, your family members to go around and to gather up their Bibles to um, if they have prayer beads, um, any story, you know, storybooks, anything that has to do with um, their faith tradition to gather them, put them in a box and they're tucked away, explaining again why, you know, that is. Fun. And then if there's any um, even drape a dark cloth over it, you don't have to do that, but whatever you do and washing the table that we are just um, going to leave that bare if possible until Easter morning. So that goes back to that sacred space that you create. You have that sacred space. But if you're going to do something like this, you can have a separate area and that reminder then for the next couple of days, you know, why that's being done because then we're going to be looking forward, of course, to your Sunday. And I included a push foot washing. And again, depending on the age of the family members, you could do it to begin just as Jesus did, but that might um, get younger kids all excited and they might not want to sit through dinner and do the other activities. So you can reverse it and do that a little bit. Um, you could do that after, and that can be a really nice evening activity also. Where you can tell the story why you're doing that and then share the story in the Bible and then have each other wash one another's feet and then talk about why why we do that and it really seems to go over really well the children really like to do that and use bubbles it doesn't have to be you know super solemn at all you know you can use bubbles to engage the children and wanting to do that and why they do something like that um, together and that can be reenacted also just as Jesus did you can you know have the towel wrapped around your waist and everybody can take part in that um, you know, to participate. And then moving on to Good Friday, um, multiple cross crafts to do. I especially love the uh, paper plate one. I, it gives the kids an opportunity to um, almost tell the story over again as they create something like that. But then to have that cross, because then it's a tangible for all the family members to talk about the journey of Jesus through the cross and then to talk about um, you know, stations of the cross that can be broken down for uh, small children too. But what I did here, 
Um, I broke it down. I just have um, seven of them. And then I did a sample, um, how I've done it, where you can see somebody would read what has happened. And then the activity, very hands-on, is to wash your hands with the water as Pontius Pilate did and say that I wash my hands of this man, you know, Jesus. So all the children's stations or all the um, interactive stations are very hands-on and very simple. I only did one as a sample just for time, but I do have um, a document that we can share in the resources to be able to use to use that. And again, having the cross craft, that's something that they could take on the journey with them as they did the Stations of the Cross, which also moves into Holy Saturday, doing some type of outdoor activity or what I call a holy hike. Um, you can just be in the outdoors together. It could even be as simple as a walk around your neighborhood, retelling the story doing the stations outside again just to, you know interacting and telling the story that way um, is an opportunity to be out in nature and also um, share the story and have that day together and then an activity also to do is uh, making a paschal candle or candle to celebrate your easter celebration with i have two different ones here i have this one that's just a small candle that i used um what are they called the little push pins for bulletin boards and you can push, you know, push those in. There's five um, representing the five wounds, um, but you can do any type of symbol symbolism you want to use. And it doesn't even have to be religiously looking. You know, it can be super creative, all kinds of glitter, glue, beads, whatever. Just you know, give people an opportunity to do, you know, whatever creation they have. My fun one that I really love is. Um, this is a uh, like a smaller pillar candle, but what this is is a. I had a here it is. You take a napkin, any kind of tech decorative napkin. You know, so you can see, and I cut it in. What you do is you just place it around the candle and you use your iron. And just when the iron gets a little close to it, it kind of melts it to it. So you can use any type of creative. I mean, I just had a bunny um, napkin, but I just think there's so many activities that we can use with this, but I thought it was a nice way to um, have that then as part of your Easter, you know, celebration. Put that down there. And then also on that Saturday, if you're doing, if you did strip the altar and you did that activity with your family, and then when everybody's asleep, somebody can put everything out again. So the same thing as participating in an Easter vigil when you have that, you know, celebratory moment when everybody wakes up, make it a, a celebration, make it a party. Um, you can have balloons, you can even make decorations during the week that would be used then on Easter Sunday in your home. If um, you did bury the Alleluia, should talk about that sooner, but even if you didn't do that yet, that's something you can start even before you begin your um, Palm Sunday activities with, with your family. And then use the candle that you made, um, you know, as part of your Easter celebration. And then something else is to um, plant some seeds because seeds, again, the story to talk about life, new life and resurrection, an opportunity to plant seeds. And this these are really simple. It's a, um, the container actually can go in the ground so you don't have to worry about extra plastic or anything like that. You can plant in a container garden or if people have a garden at their home. And then these particular ones are tomato seeds. And what I've done is encourage people to grow them and then share. The, if they keep some, then also share the first fruits and then donate that to a food bank or feeding ministry program. So again, they're giving, they're giving back um, that way. Um, and that those are the um, those are some of the activities. Does anybody have any questions before I? No questions. Yeah. And here we're thinking your you thinking your puppy found a squeaky toy because all of a sudden we heard squeaking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> it's just uh, it's it's a time you know with the alleluias. He's just he's saying his alleluias. Right. Right, there we go. Um, and be as creative as, like, this is just a, um, almost like an outline. Be as creative as um, you're inspired to be. Um, and then these are some resources that I use. Building Faith is an excellent resource. They have um, a lot of um, wonderful resources available. Of course, Messy Church, um, YouTube has the rock um, video that I, I do. It's really fun to watch. And then, of course, the, um, you know, reading the books that I have um, listed there for you. And Story Path is great because they have um, books that are that 
current day books or current day activities that coincide with Bible stories. So that's a really wonderful, you know, wonderful resource to weave some of that into your messy church programming. But again, um, some of the activities were taken from this, but this is just a wonderful, um, wonderful resource, um, you know, for you. So, okay. I have a question, Maureen. Mm -hmm. um, so are these things that you've used both when you were able to meet in person, I mean, it seems like a, an awful lot for one family to do. Do you have some, um, are you thinking that they maybe would choose one from one from each day or something like that? Or um, are, are, or do your families like to have all kinds of uh, ideas? Well, we've done it two ways. Um, what we've done is the families would get a, a book that has, you know, things lined out, you know, for them. Um, that they can pick and choose what they wanted to use, sorry, during the week. Um, and then, or if they wanted to, um, most people will on Sundays participate. We also have, for us, we have also have a virtual service for Easter. So most people will participate in that and they'll bring their um, Paschal candle. Well, it'll be, not bring it, but their Paschal candle, we're, we're celebrating that um, together. So try to do some interactive um, things, you know, like that. Um, with them. So it was set up to follow um, through the week each day. I'm sorry, I was going to say, I think it's been really helpful. One of the things kind of throughout, like Maureen said, just giving your families options and then kind of stepping back and saying, y'all pick and choose what's working for your family with this sense of kind of I don't want to say no expectation, but also that like sense of ownership, right? Like here we've provided this for you, but we also don't expect you to do 500 different, you know, activities that like here, here's some ways. Um, and that way our families that are particularly overwhelmed don't feel obligated to do everything, right. but they have the tools that they need to do something. Right. And it may seem like a fire hose of information, but it's really just to give you um, like an outline and, and uh, resources of, of how you can, um, you know, share Easter, you know, at home during this time. Um, so y'all can keep kind of posting questions um, if you want to, um, but I'm going to switch gears for us. Um, Let's see. Um, I'm going to switch gears for us and let's talk about, gosh, um, maybe if we ever get through the pandemic <laughs> and, um, and maybe even in some of you in your churches are able to gather in person, maybe out of outdoors um, or in kind of small groups. Um, so I want to talk just a little bit about um, kind of what it looks like and how I would go about planning for Messy Easter. One of the biggest problems that I have um, in trying to plan for something like Messy Easter, and we've just really kind of highlighted that, is that there's so many options to choose from. And there's so many different ways that you can approach um, planning for Messy Easter. Some of it's going to depend on whether you're going to do something just before Easter um, and at that point, you perhaps want to think about planning for not just Easter, but also some Holy Week stuff. Um, but if you're doing um, a messy Easter, if you're doing like a like this year with Easter falling in early April, maybe you're looking at something for March um, and something for April. And so you might be thinking more Lent or Holy Week for your March messy church with um, something more specifically kind of Easter Sunday or post Easter um, stories for April. So thinking about like, how do we, how do we choose, um, you know, I get a bazillion emails right now from all kinds of different groups trying to share different ideas. Um, and they all look really good, but you can't do, I mean, an average messy church, you want, you know, maybe 10 activities. Um, so you end up with so many to choose from. So how do you how do you kind of pare that down? So this is more from like a messy leader's perspective. How do you kind of approach planning for messy Easter? Um, so 
So again, just kind of thinking about, are you covering Palm Sunday? Are you coming, are you covering kind of Holy Week or are you just focused on um, the resurrection story or maybe some stuff um, kind of some of like Jesus caring to Thomas or whatnot. Um, and it's always really good to know kind of what your takeaway is. What do you want people to know about, what do you want people to remember when they leave your messy church? Um, for us at Aldersgate, Messy Church has been, or Messy Easter has been our biggest outreach event that we do. Even kind of looking at any of our messy churches that we offer um, throughout the year, Messy Easter is the one where we are most likely to get families who don't have any real connection to the church. We may only see them at Messy Easter. Um, and so what, you know, what's the one takeaway? Like, what do we want? Um, what do we want them to know? And are we using language that they can understand? Or are we using kind of insider language? Um, so that's just kind of something to keep in mind with your, with your messy Easter. A few years ago, I started kind of approaching messy Easter with a different, um, a different perspective. Started looking at what could be a theme that um, could help bind kind of all of the Easter ideas into one cohesive messy Easter. The story stays the same in the sense that it, it, it's always kind of the, the gospel story. I mean, like that doesn't change, but um, I've started using like kind of a, a theme to help me organize what our activities are. So, um, I, wanted, I keep wanting to say last year, but it wasn't last year. It wasn't 2020. It was 2019. It was the last time that we gathered in person for Missy Easter um, is when we actually used a garden theme. So all of our activities really centered around kind of the life cycle of a butterfly or the life cycle of a seed. We planted, um, Maureen, I love that you showed the little biodegradable or plantable kind of um, flower pots because we used those. Kids were able to decorate them and then actually plant a seed that they could then take home and um, families could plant those in their own um, yards. Or if they didn't have a yard, they could keep them um, in their house or patio or something like that and grow them. Um, we, our snack was, um, we used different foods, like the little butterfly shaped cookies or crackers, um, which are <laughs> a lot harder to find than I thought they were gonna be, but we used those and some other things um, kind of snack items to um, walk through the life cycle of a butterfly. We had lots of butterfly crafts um, and that not. The picture that I have for the garden theme is um, we used heart shaped pieces of paper put together to form a flower and everybody added their flowers to our cross in the commons area of our church. And we basically made our own messy church version of a flowering cross. Um, this is one of those that I thought was gonna be a good activity, but it actually turned out better than I could have even imagined. Like it ended up being really beautiful. And it's always been an Easter tradition at Aldersgate to, um, to have the flowering cross on Easter Sunday. And our folks always want to gather their families and take pictures, um, you know, family pictures in front of the cross. But I saw so many of our messy church families doing that exact thing in front of our paper flower cross. Um, it just ended up being a really great activity. The year before that, um, we actually used a Candyland theme. And so the picture is actually, um, that is my shopping cart on a Walmart trip <laughs> to prepare for Messy Church or Messy Easter. Um, you can see I bought a lot of peeps, um, a, lot of, um, a lot of candy, um, but we used um, all kinds of different activities um, using Easter candy. So hollow Easter bunnies we used to talk about um, the empty tomb. We made Play-Doh out of Peeps. Um, it is um, Peeps, um, coconut oil, and cornstarch in a microwave. And, you, and it turns into some really funky um, Play-Doh. Um, my messy church volunteer said that activity was awesome. Please don't ever make us do that again. Um, that was what that was what they told me. Um, but it was just it was so much fun. Um, we built stuff out of jelly beans. We did a um, 
sweet, sour, spicy um, taste test. Um, this bag of um, jelly beans right here, they are spicy jelly beans. And I had um, some red hots as well. Um, and I have some hilarious pictures of kids tasting like sour things and, and whatnot. And the year before that, we actually used the story of, um, this is just one of those little stories that kind of floats around and I've never actually seen it completely written up. Um, but there's a legend about why donkeys have a cross shape. Um, you know, if they're a gray donkey, they have kind of a white shape or a black shape um, of a cross on their back. And there's a story or a legend that, um, you know, the donkey that carried Jesus into Jerusalem um, kind of stood in front of the cross um, on Good Friday and the shadow of the cross was on um, her back. And she, you know, from then on out, donkeys had, you know, a cross. So we actually used that story. And so the kids made donkeys and we made um, little story cards. Um, and I can show this. I had an artist in our congregation who drew some pictures. And I just wrote the, the story up in little cards. And we gave everybody one of these little key hook things. Um, and as they moved around our different activities, they got different pieces of, um, of the story. And so when they came home, they actually had a little book that they could color or um, that they could keep. Um, the plan for 2020 <laughs> had been to do an Easter surprise. So um, activities that in involved the surprise of Easter. Um, so I'm, I'm saving that for hopefully 2022. Um, and let's see, we're gonna, um, we'll come back to the Easter egg hunt um, kind of thing. So questions at this point, and I can show you a few other, um, kind of a few other things in terms of organizing um, messy ideas. I have a I have a question, um, Johanna. Um, can you share a little bit more about how you used the candy in sharing the the story of Easter? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me see if I can. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen here, and I'll show you. Um, ah, let's see. Um, I was looking through our old Facebook. Can y'all see my, um, Roberta, can you see that? Um, my Facebook post. Yeah, here. we can see it. Okay, it's, just right, not, it's just not large, yeah. Yeah, okay. It. All right, let's see. Let me find my candy land. Um, there we go. So these are pictures from our kind of messy, um, our messy church that year and um, we actually kind of set up our gym like a candy land um, kind of inspired. So we had little markers all around the room and little um, kind of candy decorations. Um, and so each of, so we use the pretzel prayer. Um, and this is one of my volunteers. She's got a card that says pretzel park on it. Um, and that was a particular area. So if you look at the candy land board game, there are different areas. Um, and they all have different names. Um, so each kind of section had different activities related to um, maybe that area. So um, let's see. Okay, Henry is trying um, one of the red hots, I think, at this in this picture. Here's one of my favorites. But um, with the, the, the sweet and sour and spicy candy, we talked about how different parts of the story, different parts of the Easter story were kind of sour or bitter. Um, different parts were hot, like they were, um, people were angry or we get angry when we hear the story. Other parts like on Easter Sunday morning, seeing Jesus again was sweet. Um, so we were able to kind of tie that in. Um, let's see. Um, we made stuff out of lollipops and the peeps we talked about, um, you can see there's quite a, um, a quite a line to make, um, kind of peep um, marshmallows there. But um, yeah, we just, I, it just helped me um, kind of, it helped me as an organizer think through um, what, what activities um, 
I could pick. So I was actually going to show um, uh, my, okay, it always gets hidden. So this is my actual like personal messy Easter board on Pinterest. Um, and this is, and this is my biggest problem as a messy leader, right? Like I have 390 pins just about messy Easter. So when it comes time to pick 10 or 15 or whatever, um, I mean, there are just, there's so many different activities to choose from. Um, and so for me having an overarching theme, you know, then I could kind of start to say, all right, this would be good for a garden theme. Um, this activity right here uses um, baby powder or flour. And it talks about how bees pollinate flowers, like they take pollen from one flower to the next. And so we use it to talk about how um, Jesus's love spreads from person to person. Um, so that was part of that kind of, um, and there's the life cycle of a butterfly um, that we used. So it's just, it's more about, for me, how, you know, kind of organizing things. And just as I look through all these different ideas, um, how do I, you know, how do I kind of plan? Um, I will second Maureen's, um, I actually have an old version of that, um, of the Messy Easter book. This one, um, I had to, I had to order from the UK because um, this was before Messy USA was around. Um, so it actually has the old logo and stuff on it, but um, I've used it probably every year with different ideas. And some ideas you can use year after year, um, but if you have kind of a regular group that are coming, it's nice to be able to think about how to approach it a little bit differently. Any other questions? I really like the carabiner with that's a really nice way to have it lend itself to anything yeah this was great i mean essentially we did this with the um with the candy land one as well each different area had a different card um and we just tried to encourage everybody to pick up you know a card and the card had um i tried to find i must not have saved um I'm sure it's on my computer somewhere but you know each card kind of had like um, Pretzel Park, you know, and it had a little thing about Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And so one of the activities had to do with the pretzel prayer. And so the cards became take homes that reminded people of the story. And again, that reminder that a lot of the folks that attend your messy church may not know, may not know the whole story. Um, and so just ways that we can kind of send them home with reminders and whatnot. Um, I was going to share one other um, activity um, with you that would work um, this year. Um, we're actually going to do this, I think, in person on a very like small scale. Um, this together at home, um, and I'll share the link in the chat as well. They have an Easter trail. Um, and you've got this really fun um, kind of way of doing an Easter egg hunt. Um, so the, the sheet looks something like this. And it's like, find, um, find the egg that has a leaf on it. Find the, leg, the egg that has the um, cup and bread on it. Um, and it kind of goes one by one. You could set this one up outside um, and have families just kind of drop by during cer certain hours and kind of go from station to station. Um, I think we are gonna spread out Easter eggs. Um, we've got the little tiny small labels, um, just the little small ones, and we're gonna put those on the eggs um, and kind of spread everybody out. Um, I'm in South Carolina, so our kind of gathering regulations are non-existent maybe at this point. Um, some kind of regulate, I, you know, on the whole, um, we're kind of fully out of lockdown, I guess, um, if we ever really were in lockdown. So we have a little bit more flexibility in terms of kind of gathering. Um, and so we, um, we are expecting to see some folks in person um, masked up and, and spread out and whatnot on Easter. And so we wanted to make sure that we could include some of our families 
Um, but the, I think that resource would be a great one. Um, I like that. No matter what, I mean, kind of pre-COVID, post-COVID, it'd be a great one to do at home. Um, I would imagine that plastic Easter eggs and some permanent markers, you could make your own kind of eggs um, and do this at home as just a, a family Easter egg hunt um, or whatnot. Um, and this just kind of brings us to our, our kind of final thing that we were going to talk about today. And that is, do you use a, an egg hunt during your messy Easter? Um, you know, a lot of churches kind of sponsor their own Easter egg hunt. Um, we, when we were getting started with Messy Church, our first Easter that we were doing Messy Church, we took a pre-existing Easter egg hunt, basically, that drew, I mean, it was, it was pretty much just our own kind of church folks that were showing up for that Easter egg hunt. But we took the Easter egg hunt and we adapted it into a Messy Easter. Um, and so when we have Messy Easter at Aldersgate we, in person, we do actually incorporate an Easter egg hunt. Um, I've used the eggs as a way to teach the story and like to do the celebration time. So I've hidden eggs, um, especially if you can find the, the bigger eggs um, that had different numbers on them. And we use that like the resurrection eggs um, that you've probably used in Sunday school before. Um, we've had those kind of where we've used those eggs to teach the story. Um, I, you know, we've used um, this, um, the Easter trail is a great way to kind of use the eggs and the egg hunt as part of your celebration time. Um, when, we, when we do an Easter egg hunt for Messy Easter, we start with our welcome and our activities. And then from our activities, we have the Easter egg hunt and then we have the celebration time and then the meal. Um, we have learned that if we want people to stick around for celebration time and for the meal, we actually don't put treats in the eggs. That's, that's just kind of good practice across the board. We had an egg that was hidden in our sanctuary of all places that, stay, that stayed hidden for about six months um, a couple of years ago or our organist recognized that it was there, but he just waited to see if anybody noticed. Um, and I'm very thankful that that did not have candy in it, or maybe we would have found it sooner, um, but because of a much more complicated problem than just, oh, there's an Easter egg, let's put it up. So we don't put uh, candy or anything like that. Um, so after the egg hunt, everybody kind of regathers. We tell the Easter story, we have our celebration time, and then we invite families to come and kind of return the eggs and receive an Easter basket, kind of an Easter treat that we do. Um, and that for us is kind of a way of hoping that people are gonna stick around long enough to at least hear the story, um, but also kind of give them an Easter egg hunt. Um, for us, it is also a really fabulous way to get folks who wouldn't necessarily come to a church Easter event, but if you are looking for an Easter egg hunt to do with their kids, um, it gets us into some advertising um, on just like family friendly. Um, we have a great group of people that do um, something called Kidding Around Greenville, um, and they are constantly updating their website and their Facebook page with different family ideas to do in our, in our city. Um, and we are always able to advertise as an egg hunt um, and in fact consistently kind of end up on their best Easter egg hunt um, in town kind of list. Um, but Messy Easter we know is far more than just the egg hunt, um, but it's just kind of that great promotional invitational tool. Um, so I've liked kind of having the both and, but I think that's a judgment call for um, for each church. So I didn't know what y'all um, what y'all have done in the past or um, what you thought about doing or other ideas. Um, this is a great opportunity for um, us to brainstorm together. So what are some things that y'all are um, doing this year or thinking about doing post-COVID, um, post-lockdown or anything like that? I did, I did ask the question in the chat 
um, what are the ideas that have worked well for you so we can do some sharing. It looks like Maureen has a question. You can go ahead and unmute yourself or um, put your question in the chat also. Um, one thing I wanted to share, what I have found with our families is that they really love sharing pictures, so especially during this time of COVID when we're doing activities at home. I always ask them to email me any pictures and there's a, a free app, it's called Mosho super easy to use and I really mean that because I am not technical. Um, it's called Mosho and it's free and you can create videos and it, they're really fun. If there's music and they have all kinds of um, templates but it does it automatically for you. All you do is upload your picture and then you pick them. And then what I've done, we've some, cause we're doing virtual service, we've shown those sometimes at the beginning before service starts. So it's a way then to connect your community to what's going on at home, like with your you messy church, um, but to um, you know share it with the community that way. So it's a, it's a free resource and it's very simple um, to use that I can attest to because now I use it all the time. Um, Mo Mosho, it's you can download free app on your phone to do that. And then I'll say one more thing, and then I'll let everybody else talk. One thing we did once with. Um, on Holy Thursday, Monday, Thursday, is we uh, went outside, um, and this is, you, you can do it at your home, and told the rest of the story outside. It's not a ghost story, I know, but we wanted the kids to uh, feel the fear, like to feel, to experience the questioning and what's happening, who's coming, and that was a really tangible, again, hands-on experience for them to have a, a deeper understanding or even a, a little more of an understanding of what was actually happening. So, you know, to use the elements, to, if the weather permits to, you know, take some of that outside um, works really well. So, oh, here, I will make sure that I'm, I see the question for the app. I'll make sure I, um, I put, I put it in the link, but I, I haven't used it. Is that the right one? M -O yes. Okay. M-O-S-H-O-W. Okay. Any other, uh, any questions or any favorite things that you want to share with uh, one another? Are you ready for Easter? Are you still making it through, uh, uh, th through Lent? I think, uh, Johanna, what you were talking about with the Easter egg hunt, I think is, um, I know uh, I'm not currently serving a church, but when I was serving a church and we were doing messy church, that sort of, adapt, we have adapted that over over time. Um, we always had our messy church on a Saturday. And so when on um, Easter weekend, the very first time we had an Easter brunch, and people came to the brunch and then they did activities and then we did an Easter egg hunt at the very end. And we were overwhelmed with, we got so many people that we didn't know what to do uh, because we were not prepared uh, for that. And then we ended up transitioning more to um, if uh, we had our messy, East, our messy Easter, we usually did a we usually did a Holy Week, a walk through Holy Week, and then um, and then invited people. Uh, we started doing our Easter egg hunt on actually Saturday on Sunday after our worship, after our Easter worship, and then we invited. Met, always told the Messy Church families they were welcome to come to uh, Sunday morning worship. They didn't have to come to Sunday morning worship, but they could come just for the Easter egg hunt, and that's what we ended up doing. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why I threw it out there is the question because I think it's worth I think it's a question worth asking in your in your church. Um, we prepare for so on a, an average messy church for us, we might have 80 people, including volunteers. Okay, that's an average size. Um, sometimes it's a little bit bigger, sometimes it's a little bit smaller, but on the whole, that's about where we're at. Um, the First and second year, well, not first and second year, I would say in like 2016 and 2017, um, we probably had 125 to 130 children, not including volunteers, not including parents, um, grandparents, any of that kind of stuff attend. So when we shop for food for Messy Easter, it is one of the biggest parts of, of our budget um, and I usually try to find some sponsors to help out with the cost because we usually are cooking for um, 300. Um, and I think one of the biggest things because of that 
or one of the reasons for that is because we are and we're advertised as an egg hunt. Um, but the other side of that is it's that many people that we get to share the Easter egg, you know, the Easter story with. Um, and so it's the uh, if maybe if you if you can't, you know, your facilities can't handle a crowd, or if you your budget can't handle a huge crowd, maybe don't advertise yourself as an Easter egg hunt, and that's perfectly okay. It's just worth kind of having that question because Roberta, I think you're right. Like people are always looking for, you know, kind of a fun Easter egg hunt to do with their families around the Easter season. Um, so it's worth kind of asking, can we handle this if we end up with a huge crowd and is this what we're looking for or not? So um, I see some folks sharing um, some great resources. This is another one that I have used through the years. It's called Sharing That Easter Faith with Children. Um, it's written by Carolyn Brown. Um, she's got some great um, ideas. It's not like a book of, it's got some reproducibles, um, but it's really just kind of meant to say, here's like helping kids navigate um, the complexities of the story. Um, so she's really kind of getting at some of like kind of children's spirituality. Um, and again, when you're also dealing with folks who've never heard the Easter story themselves, um, Focusing on, you know, how you would share it with children is, isn't a bad thing for our adults either. Um, even some of the adults who have been coming to church all of their lives probably could use a children's perspective on the story. Um, so this has been a good resource um, that I've used, not just for Messy Church. I, I'm not, a, I'm, I don't mean to be advertising Amazon, but um, I've just been trying to, that's my fastest way to find these books. So that's why I've been putting the Amazon links in the, in the chat for the people, things that people are mentioning. Karna, I just wanted to ask you, you mentioned that you're um, using this book by um, uh, Glennis Nellist. I don't know that book. Can you say a little bit more about it? Um, well, ironically, she's also from England, um, and so we seem to be in that part of the world, don't we, um, as we think about sharing faith. Um, if you go to her website, it's a new book, so you can look at the book in its entirety to make sure that it's representative of your own, you know, theological understanding of Easter. And then she also has an activity where she encourages you to buy a book and take it apart and make an Easter trail like you were proposing so you can walk mm -hmm. through the Easter story and so you know maybe take planters and um, use foam core board to put the pages of the book on so that people could walk through the Easter story. She's a great author. That's a great, um, that's a really great resource. Um, she's got a lot of children's books that work well for um, her, you know, Sunday school. Um, I use children's books when I teach adult Sunday school half the time, um, but she's, she's a great resource to kind of have. So I love that you're using her for stuff. I have several friends who um, consistently kind of go back to see when's her next book going out and, and whatnot. So that's a great, um, a great author to just kind of remember. <laughs> If you read the Little Mole book, it's the same author, everybody. Um, and the link that I gave um, a little bit after Amazon, the Amazon link, um, it's a church source link. And if you scroll down, you can get quantity discounts if you're looking at many copies of the book. Great, thank you for that. I also put in the um, in the link uh, an article from Christine Hyde, who uh, does a lot of intergenerational work and children's ministry work in the United Methodist Church. Uh, she has a blog post that um, about talking meaningfully about the hard parts of Easter that I found helpful. I think I put that a link on that on the latest newsletter from Messy Church, but um, that's also in the, uh, some some other resources there. 
Well, any other questions at all? Hopefully you have found this helpful as you start thinking about what you're going to be doing and continue to uh, share with one another. Um, I will be uh, sending out, probably it'll be tomorrow, I'll be sending out um, the uh, PDF copies of uh, the presentations that Johanna and Maureen did and also a copy of the, of the recording that you can um, that you can watch if you want to go back and watch it again later. So um, any other questions at all? Thank you for um, joining us today. Uh, uh, and we hope and pray that um, as you, how many of you are already do have been, have done messy church uh, uh, at your church at least once or twice, if you could raise your hand. Okay, and some of you then are new to Messy Church, um, so um, we'll, we'll, our, we are continuing to have uh, webinars uh, about once a month. Our next webinar is going to be focused on practical aspects because it's focused on money, and it's on uh, tax day, April 15th, uh, Reverend Dr. Andrew Holmes from Indianapolis is going to be sharing um, ways that they have financed their messy church, which is a question that we get frequently whenever we do a getting started training. There is a training this Saturday. It's a full day training that Maureen and Johanna, they're doing two this week, uh, plus one other person, uh, plus um, uh, Cindy Bannock from Virginia are going to be leading on how best ways to get started with messy church. So again, thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Johanna or or Maureen, did you have anything else you wanted to say? I was going to say, I think, and, I, and you may kill me for speaking out of turn, but um, our plan, um, we have a writing team now for Messy Church USA, and our plan is to hopefully have a couple of Messy Church, Messy Easter sessions posted um, on our webpage in the coming few weeks, including one... Um, Hopefully we're working on it, um, trying to get it up, but that one on Holy Week um, and another one that is based around the Candyland theme that I shared with you that we did um, that would be for an at-home session for your families um, using how to use up your Easter candy or um, take advantage of the 50 percent off day after Easter sales for Easter candy. So kind of a after Easter um, reflection as well. So those are not up yet. We are working on them. Um, but check back on at Messy Church USA um, in the following weeks and hopefully we'll we'll have those sessions up that you can take and use. We'll get, we'll get those up, and when we get them up, we'll send it out via Facebook and also probably in a newsletter blast. So, all right. Thank you so much for joining us today and blessings to you as you continue to walk through uh, the remainder of Lent and uh, turn your eyes towards the cross and the glory of the resurrection morning. So blessings to you all. Bye-bye.